So, demonstration of the fast wall warm system. Um, what we're going to put up today is the 2.4 metre high wall section. Um, as you'll see, everything's put up by hand, no cranes uh, used. What we've done is marked on the floor and we've put a string line on 18mm back, the thickness of the fly, so we can use this to set the system out. So, the first thing we do, we're going to work out from a corner today. So, we're going to put a full 2.4 by 2.4 wall section in. Um, with a corner, so showing the fixings of corners and how you work out from a corner, uh, which is always the best way. So, first thing we're going to do is use one of our internal corners and put it on the inside of the line. So, that sets where the corner is going to go. The next thing is to start with the first upright. We're going to put it onto the line as close to the corner as we can, and I'm going to mark the spot for drilling. So the first thing to do, we're going to drill the first hole, we're going to do all this in real time, put the first prop up, so we're going to, now going to drill the uh, hole for the uh, upright. Fixing of the props, we've moved around with the camera just to show you uh, when we come across to put the next upright in. But basically, the, the, we have a foot on the prop, and here we've got a kicker prop and a PP1, uh, which is all we need for this wall. So we put it roughly where it's going to go, which is either four or five holes from the top. That sets where the foot's going to go, so we can move that out of the way. We have the position of the foot, so we can now drill and fix the fault.
3.2 or above, we would probably use both holes in the foot uh, to give a better grip on the concrete. Now all we need to do is place our prop in position. Secure in the bottom, kick a prop. The bottom kick a prop sits into the foot of the uh, PP one. There we have the props fixed. All that's left to do is to uh, plumb up the prop. We're now going to jump to time lapse to put the second upright up. We'll now drop on to uh, showing the uprights in between. Um, what we do is use these intermediate braces which join the uprights. That actually sets the distance apart for the next upright, uh, which we'll see once we put the upright up. So plumbing of the brackets is very easy, the bottom was obviously set when we put the um, raw bolt in anyway, and then we just turn so it's plumb. very easy. What we're going to do now, we've got two uprights on, we've got the bottom one um, intermediate bracing loose, uh, we don't tighten them up at, at this juncture. So we're starting at the top and work our way down, they go at 400 centres. At the bottom you'll get them at slightly more than 400 centres, but that's where most of the pressure of the concrete is. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to put each of them in loose before we tighten them up. Just hand tight for now. You'll notice we have 100 mil centres, so if we needed to beef them up for a what single-sided wall, or we needed to catch where the centre of apply was, we've got holes at 100 mil centres so that it makes it more flexible for the position if you need them.
are in place we can tighten up with the uh, battery impact wrench. Just making sure the brackets are uh, positioned correctly before you tighten. what we've done here we've made a panel construction so we can carry on now we're going to jump in time lapse put the next panel on and we'll time lapse everything the other way just to save time once built up and we've attached the ply and um, the ply sits on the front face screws in through the many screw holes at the back we've also got holes for tie bars um, but once in position and poured if you wanted to lift a panel or multiple panels you can simply attach uh, a lifting eye to the top of the system and you can lift it like a conventional wall system so it does have the benefit of working like a conventional wall system and you can lift in larger panels and move once poured but also the benefit of being able to be put up in situ with no crane whatsoever stripped and removed and obviously we do a lot of basements where there's no mechanical lifting involved or you can't get a crane or mechanical lifting in um, so we've done walls up to five meters high um, using this system we just ladders and um, aluminium scaffold towers um, but then we've done bigger jobs where they've been left in panels and been moved in three or four metre sections so we're now going to just jump to time lapse we're going to just proceed again with the next procedure which will be to put the next upright up, join it we'll work from the corner and work out the other way and then we'll jump onto the other side and show you the fixing uh, of the opposite side because obviously everything is propped on one side so once the props are in the system's solid So now we've got the internal frame up, the next thing to do is um, screw the ply on. You can see that we have lots of holes for screwing the ply 
throughout all of the members, the vertical and the horizontal. Um, generally what we do is, this is a 2.4, so we would put our ply generally up the centre of the upright. There's two sets of holes either side, so when we screw that dead centre and fix it into place from behind with the screws, the next sheet would go on. This one will be slightly different because we're doing a corner. Uh, so what's going to happen is we're going to have a... We're going to put the ply on the other way. So we've cut the sheet um, so it goes lengthways. Now you'll notice we have lots of holes in the sides. So we've put this bracing in for a, a vertical sheet. Uh, but what we'll do in a moment when we swap to the time lapse, we're just going to move that up one notch and then it'll fit dead centre. So you've always got a sheet of ply in the centre of one of our um, braces across the middle. Uh, it's one of the reasons we have so many holes, so it, it accommodates any sort of size or type of ply or any corners that you might want to put in. Uh, so we've got all our ply ready to go on, so we're now just going to drop onto the time lapse while we stick these in. Now we come to fixing the outside face, very straightforward. What we're going to do is put a tie bar over the top. We're going to position our upright at the correct distance away. Mark, drill, pin, and then we just repeat the inside process. Obviously a lot easier this side, we've got no uprights to put up because uh, we're already done. Um, so we'll just jump to time lapse now and, and show the same processes on the inside of the wall. Now we've got the outside framework up, um, we've just held in with a divvy bar on the top at the moment. Um, we'll put the centre ones in once we've got the ply on, so the, the next thing to do is put the ply on. So you can see there we've come to the external corner, what we're going to be fixing is another upright into this corner and then we have an external corner piece that holds it all in. Um, so we'll jump to the time lapse for just popping the ply on. Um, we'll, we'll put the ply on then we'll stop again and explain the corner being fitted. So what we're going to do now, we've secured the corner with our corner bracings. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually sit one of our uprights really close to the corner. we we'll secure that, just screw it on, same on the other side. Um, and then we'll put some tie bars through and we'll put one of our bottom external corner bracings on. Uh, so we'll just pause while we put the two uprights on. Uh, and then we'll come back to the corner bracing. So we've installed the external corners. We've put an upright next to them. This is going to give them a bit of strength when we put our um, corner bracing on, which we're now going to put on the bottom. So we've just poked some tie bars through. So then we just fit on the corner brace. Slot straight over. Tightened with tie bars and plates.
That's the corner bracing fixed. So the corner bracing pushes against these uprights, which holds all the corner in place. We're now going to put the rest of the ply on. Uh, we'll put the rest of the tie bars through, and we'll put two more corners on. We usually do put one near the bottom, one in the middle, one at the top. The bottom of these uprights is held with a roll bolt anyway, so the bottom of the corner is uh, secured anyway. So we'll now jump to time lapse and finish off the ply and the rest of the corners. So fitting access brackets, generally they're fitted on the back of the shutter, so on the other side we've got our props, so this leaves this side free for the access, so we'll now show you how to fit a bracket. Basically just right straight into the slots. You'll notice that we've put the access lower down. They can fit on the top of the uh, walls generally. We put them lower down because it gives you a natural barrier in front of you and it means that you don't have to handrail the other side. So we'll just pop on to the uh, time lapse now and we'll pop the rest of the brackets on. <laughs> 